Next up is multiplying and dividing decimals. You can take them one at a time. Multiplication of decimals. When we do this, we write it vertically, so top to bottom. We don't write it sideways. If you see it sideways, rewrite it. It'll be easier for you. When you have it rewrited, it, or when you start rewriting it, it doesn't matter where your decimal is. So let's say I have 3.6. And I'm going to multiply that by, uh, let's say, 12.42. <clears throat> What's really important on this, rather than lining your decimals up, is lining your numbers up. Okay. Now you notice I line my decimals up without even thinking about it. Have it. Right? I don't want my decimals lined up. I'm going to rewrite it, okay? We don't want our decimals lined up when we do this. What we want lined up are numbers. So I've got 42, a decimal, and a 12. And notice even my numbers aren't really lined up. And that's okay. When we're working with multiplication, we don't have to. Because when we're multiplying decimals, what we do, we write it out, just like I have over here on the board, and then we ignore the decimal for the time being. We multiply it like a normal number. I wrote this backwards, by the way. Normally you put the small number on the bottom, big number on top, so you don't have to do as many numbers. That's okay, we can do it this way too. 6 times 2 is 12. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Now remember, when you multiply regular numbers, you skip a space. My brain never remembers to skip a, place, a space. So, I cross out the number I just finished with, and I put a zero. I don't like to, my brain doesn't like blank spaces. Putting a zero helps me. If it helps you, go for it. If you can do the blank space, do that as well. Or do that instead, okay? So now you move around to four. Four times six is... Don't you know your multiplication tables yet? You could practice. Six, twelve... 18, 24. Got my 4. I bring up my 2. 3 times 4 is 12. Plus 2 is 14. It's my last number, so 14. And I keep going until I get to the end, which is why ideally you want to put the small number on the bottom so you don't have to do as many of these. 2 times 6 is 12. I have a 1 again. 2 times 3 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. I'm done with that number. Bring my 0 down. And then I have 1. So I know I'm going to have a 6 and a 3. Now we add these numbers up. Just like normal multiplication. I've got 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I've got a 1 and I'm carrying a 1. 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's a 1. Uh, that's 6, 7, Plus 7 is 14. And 3 plus the one I just carried is 4. So now down here, I have 4, 4. Let's rewrite that one so we can see it. 4, 4, 7, 1, and 2. It has a decimal. What we do now is we ask, how many decimal places do we have in our original equation? Okay. So we take these two and we just care how many decimal places are in each one. I've got one in the top and I've got two in the bottom number, 0 0.6, 0 0.42. So I've got a total of three. One, two, three. Okay. I've got three decimal places. What I do with that is I count down here my answer, start at the end and go one, two, three. So it's right in between four and seven. So my answer is 44.712. Okay. This is multiplication. Again, ideally you put that small number on the bottom so we don't have as much adding to do. Okay. If I had the small number on the bottom, I would add just two of these instead of four. You would come out with the same answer. It would still be 44.712. Alright. Let's move on to division. <clears throat> 
we're dividing with fractions, it is it really important that you translate it correctly from the way it's written to a long division format. Alright? <coughs> so it depends on the way it's written. When it is written, point six eight divided by two. Only one of them is a decimal. But we have to remember which one, maybe there's a point here, sorry, make sure that's big. We have to determine which one goes inside our long division. Remember, long division is our little half box here, okay? Your first number in this case goes inside. It is 3.68 divided by 2. Now, if your decimal's inside, this is the easy decimal division to do. We don't change anything. We bring that decimal marker straight up, and we know our answer is going to have a decimal in it. Okay? And from here, you long division like normal. 2 goes into 3, one time. 1 times 2 is 2. I subtract that. I'm left with 1. I bring my 6 down, so I have 16 now. 2 goes into 16 how many times? If you don't have division down pat in your head, work on your multiplication tables. They help. I can remember 2 times 8 is 16, so I know it will go in there 8 times, and I will subtract 16. In this case, I'm about to remove a 0, which is fine. I bring that 8 all the way down, and now I'm going 2 into 8. And I remember 2 times 4 is 8. So I know my final answer up there is 4, and just to double check, I do my subtraction. So my answer is 1.84. Again, this is with my decimal just on the inside. That makes these pretty easy to, to finish, pretty easy to do your long division. However, if there's a decimal on the outside, you will have an extra step prior to starting your long form division. Okay. So let me rewrite a new equation up here. So we have an example of numbers to use. Let's use uh, how about three point six seven four. Big number or long number rather, not really big, right? And then we will divide that by, let's go a 1.12. Okay. So again, I have 3.674, and I'm dividing it by 1.12. Okay. So I write it out long division form. I'm dividing 1.12 into 3.6. Seven, four. All right. So the biggest difference on this one is I have a decimal on the outside. We do not like decimals on the outside, so we have to get rid of it. Easiest way to get rid of it: move it over. Okay. In this case, we move it from here. Move it over one, two spaces. So I have one hundred and twelve on the outside. Okay. If I do that on the outside, I have to do it on the inside too by the same number. So I moved it twice on the outside, so I'll move it one, two on the inside as well. So I have 367.4. Okay? I bring that decimal straight up. And then I divide like normal, right? 112 will go into three, zero times. It'll go into 36, zero times. If you can tell those two blanks are there, leave them blank and work it that way, go for it. My brain likes those zeros because otherwise I will start writing my numbers way out here and it will give me a wrong number. So 112 will go into 367. I know at least three times because my number up front is three, right? So I can multiply this out. Three times two is six. Three times one is three. Three times one is three. I subtract just like usual got one there, three there, and a zero there. I bring my four down. I have to
has to go into 314. I know 336 is too big, so 3 won't work, so let's try a 2 instead. It's going to be 4, it's going to be 2, it's going to be 2. I do my normal subtraction. I have to borrow for this one. It's at 11, so 11 minus 2 is 9. 2 minus 2 is 0. So notice I'm not done, but I've ran out of numbers up here, right? You can always add a zero. Add a zero, bring it down, and continue this. Now I have to go into 900. I'm gonna, let's try an eight. Eight times eight is 16. I'll carry the one, which means eight times one is eight, plus the one is nine, and that will be an eight. I do my subtraction, and I have a four left over. Now you will continue this until your pattern either repeats or you run out of numbers, okay? Since I've made these numbers up off the top of my head, I ended up with a really long one. Typically, if you're working through our GED packets, you will have shorter answers because that's what you'll need to be able to do to complete the GED test. You won't have to do this big, long thing like this, okay? So don't panic because I showed you a big, long one. All right, good luck with this.